Reverend slash Senator Raphael Warnock, welcome to The Daily Show. Thank you so much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump straight into it, and I, I know, I know so many... Welcome, thank you so much. You know no one has welcomed me back? Yeah. You're the first person... <laughs> you see, this is, this is why you're reverend. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, first, first things first. This is turning into a race that is way closer than people anticipated. It is turning into a race that has become a lot more national than many people anticipated. And what's been surprising is seeing how little of the news is actually about what you're doing wrong. It's just about what the other candidate is saying, which seems crazy. And, <laughs> and yet it seems closer than it should be. So I'd love to start with that. Why do you think Georgia or Georgian voters or the polls are showing that Georgian voters are so close when it seems like most people would say the two of you are so far apart? Well, I agree with the last part of what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the differences between the options that Georgians have right now are wide and deep. And, um, look, the reality is we always knew this would be a close race. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks to where the country is and where people are. Um, but I think when you look close, and you don't have to look that close, <laughs> um, uh, you, you can see that Georgians have a clear choice, I think, about who's ready, and who's fit yes. to serve. Uh, to, to represent them in uh, the United States Senate. And I believe that at the end of the day, Jordan's not gonna get it right. Yes. Let's talk about... Let's talk about what many, what many Georgians may feel is, is going wrong. There are many who are saying, we need change. And as we've seen multiple times in American politics, it's, it's all about what people's pockets feel like. It's all about what their gas tank looks like that determines a lot of how they vote. There are many Georgians who've said, I love you, Senator. I love what you're doing and what you represent. But I feel like in this moment, the Republicans are promising something that is better or different. How would you, how would you respond to the people who say that to you? Well, in my case, my opponent hasn't promised a thing. <laughs> I mean, think about it. I mean that, I'm, and I, I'm not being flippant. I, I want you to think, what, what has he actually promised to do? <laughs> uh, uh, so, look, there's no question that these are tough times. And people are feeling the pain and the pinch. We've been through over two years of a pandemic, and now that the economy has opened up, we're seeing these rising costs, supply chain issues related to the pandemic. We're seeing rising prices, by the way, globally. Right. Driven by the war in Ukraine. And on top of that, you've got bad actors in the corporate space who are literally exploiting a pandemic while we... <laughs> while... So... While, while we are paying record prices, at the pump, at the pharmaceutical counter, mm -hmm. at the grocery store, they are literally experiencing record profits. Right. And so, so, so the question is, who's going to do something about it? Who, who cares about ordinary people? And I... I... I, I take this job very seriously. You know, it's a real honor for your neighbors to say, we want you to represent us in, in high office. Mm. And so that's the reason why I capped the cost of insulin to no more than $35 an hour. That's, that's, that's the reason I capped the cost of prescription drugs so uh, women and men like my 84-year-old mother wouldn't have to choose between buying the medicine they need and the groceries they need. That's why I... I, I remain focused on the people. And when I talked the other night about capping the cost of insulin mm -hmm. and the fact that corporations are gouging insulin, a 100-year-old drug, my opponent said people just need to eat right. Oh. So, oh. I mean, th those were his words. Right. And... You know, as a pastor, I have encouraged healthy living, but that doesn't explain why the corporations are engaged in price gouging 
and you can eat right and still have diabetes. Right, right. So, so here, here's my recommendation. I think Herschel Walker should be the dietitian and I'll serve in the United States Senate. <laughs> Let's, let's talk a little bit as well about how you work as well. I, I have found it particularly interesting that even in your campaign ads in Georgia, you've gone out of your way to talk about Republicans who you have worked with, which to many people would seem like suicide. You know, you say, I've worked with Ted Cruz. I worked with Marco Rubio. Now, most people don't want to even admit that, that they know Ted Cruz. <laughs> And, and yet, you, here you are, here you are saying, no, I worked with Ted Cruz, I worked with Marco Rubio. You, you've made an effort of talking about reaching across the aisle and working with other lawmakers to get things done. It seems like that is dwindling in American politics. As you said, people are retreating to their corners and saying, this is where I stand, I work with no one else. Do you not worry about alienating some f who say, oh, how can you reach across the aisle? Or why is it that you choose to particularly include that in your own campaign ad? I mean, it's your ad. Why include Ted Cruz's name? Why put it Marco Rubio's name in it? Yeah, I'm, I'm the 18th most bipartisan senator in the Senate, uh, based uh, um, uh, according to the Luger Center. I'm the uh -huh. 18th, and that's that's a little bit of an achievement because out of 100 senators, wow, I'm 100. I'm the most junior senator in the Senate, and I've been able to convince people to work with me to pull people together. And so, yeah, I, I will be honest. Ted Cruz and I are both on the Commerce Committee. Most of the time when he's talking, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, really? <laughs> Did you, like, you put on a suit and a tie to come here to do that? So that's usually what I'm thinking. But, but when it came time to name I-14 a priority corridor in Georgia, an interstate that would run through Texas and also through Georgia, would mm -hmm. connect our military bases, would, would revitalize a lot of our rural areas that have been suffering all throughout Georgia. I didn't mind working with Ted Cruz to do that. If we can build out the highway, nobody cares if you're a Democrat or Republican, you get to use the highway. Um, so, so what I've endeavored to do is not to be a senator who used to be a pastor, but a pastor in the Senate, which is, which is why I return to my pulpit. I preach here every Sunday, and you continue to do the important work. So I hope the people of Georgia will give me six more years to keep doing this work, because... There's a good chance it might happen. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely pleasure having you. Senator Raphael Warnock, everybody.